Throughout the beginning of a human life, one will progressively learn of common dangers which pose mortal threats, as well as ways to prevent being harmed by such dangers. However, many people are not aware of the less conspicuous hazards that could potentially kill them. Today, we discuss 10 unsuspecting things that can actually kill you. The exquisite color of this mineral will undoubtedly attract gem collectors and rock or mineral collectors, but the truth of the matter is that this stone is extremely dangerous and should be handled with great caution. Calcanthite is a vibrantly colored blue-green water-soluble sulfate mineral found usually in desert regions. Moreover, calcanthite is an ore of copper, but due to its solubility, it can crystallize, dissolve, and recrystallize. In addition, calcanthite can also be grown synthetically. When submerged in water, calcanthite will turn the water to a blue-green color, just like the color of its crystals. Experts have noted that the taste of calcanthite is both sweet and metallic. However, this should never be tried as this fascinating mineral is lethal if ingested. Those who consume the contaminated water could very well die from copper poisoning. While certainly an intriguing mineral, it's probably best to leave handling it to geologists. There are few things that make people's skin crawl more than thinking a bug is creeping around our mouths while we're asleep, and we have no idea. Unfortunately, one such insect makes this unsettling event its goal. The kissing bug it is called by some, the assassin bug is called by others. These vile insects feed on the blood of vertebrates, although a few other species consume the blood of other invertebrates. Indoors, they are typically found in bedrooms, underneath pillows, and around mattresses. Their name comes from the fact that they usually suck the blood around the lips and face of sleeping human beings. Many species have the potential to carry Chagas disease to mammals, including humans. This parasitic sickness can increase the risk of death by two to three times. If untreated, this can cause heart, digestive, and neurological complications. Sadly, many people who are infected by the Chagas parasite are never properly diagnosed, as the symptoms are very similar to the flu. The symptoms can go away for years and later come back as heart disease. Many people die as a result. So perhaps the next time you go to bed, it might be a wise idea to check around your mattress because you can never be too certain that a kissing bug isn't lying in wait. In life, it's generally true that too little or too much of something will ultimately have negative consequences. This includes, but is not limited to, sleeping. Too much or too little sleep, both can have pretty dire results in the end. Studies have shown that sleep duration has dropped 1.5 to 2 hours per night per person in the last 50 years. Even more startling, recent studies have shown that shortened sleep duration, which is less than 6 hours of sleep, can increase the risk of heart disease. 15 medical studies involving nearly 475,000 people discovered that short sleepers had a 48% chance of dying from coronary heart disease in a 7 to 25 year period. In addition to this, the chances of dying from a stroke were also increased. It's also worth noting that long sleepers, which are individuals who sleep more than 9 hours, increase their chance of dying from heart disease or a stroke by 38%. The link between shortened and prolonged sleep and heart disease isn't entirely understood yet, as it is a fairly new area in research. Additionally, prolonged sleep can increase the risk of developing Parkinson's disease, and like the other risks involved, there is more medical exploration to be done in this area. In the end, it probably isn't a good idea to briefly or excessively sleep. Medical experts advise that adults should sleep 7 to 9 hours per night.
yet another beautiful stone with even more hazardous properties than the previous mineral discussed. Regrettably, for many of you in the audience, this could indeed be somewhere in your home. And it's hazardous because torbernite is a radioactive mineral. Due to its emerald green color, it's often sought after by gem collectors. Torbernite can be found in granite, so there could in fact be traces of this mineral in your granite countertops if you have them. When heated, torbernite will release radon gas, which can cause lung cancer if respired. It is for this reason that experts advise collectors to keep their samples of torbernite in gas-tight transparent containers. Unfortunately, those with real granite countertops may have already inhaled radon gas, depending on how significant the amount of radioactive material is within the granite. But I wouldn't worry too much. It's said that typically the radon is so far diluted in the air that it really shouldn't be hazardous to your health. So take a nice deep breath and know, that you'll probably be just fine. At some point, there's always that dreaded time where you have to clean the bathroom. However, it's very possible that you could accidentally kill yourself while undertaking this seemingly mundane chore. The active ingredient in chlorine bleach is sodium hypochlorite. It can be found in most household disinfectant products. Most households also store ammonia and other acids for drain cleaners. Additionally, ammonia can be found in window cleaners and urine. Regrettably, many people have unknowingly mixed the two, especially when cleaning their toilet. When bleach and these acids are mixed, chloramines, which are toxic gases, are the result. When exposed to chloramine gases, symptoms include coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain, watery eyes, runny nose, nausea, fluid in the lungs, and if the exposure is high enough, even death. This deadly mixture of chemicals can also potentially cause an explosion. But even if that doesn't occur, the chemicals can boil and spray a scalding, toxic liquid. Ultimately, it's never a good idea to carelessly mix chemicals, as the outcome could indeed prove fatal. This creature may seem adorable and harmless, but surprisingly enough, it holds the potential to kill a human being. Slow lorises are a group of several species of nocturnal primates found in Southeast Asia. They can be characterized by their large eyes, equally long limbs, and flexible trunk, which allows them to twist and extend to branches within their reach. Their hands and feet both have pincer-like grips, so they can hold on to a branch for long periods of time. In addition, these seemingly mild primates have a deadly bite, one that releases a toxin that they use to stop predators and protect their younglings by coating them with it. The toxin is obtained by licking a gland on their elbow. A bite from a slow loris could prove fatal to a human being if they are allergic to the toxin. Most likely you won't ever come across one of these primates, but if by some chance you do, it would be best to avoid the temptation of petting them. Water is an essential part of surviving. And while it's always important to stay hydrated, it's equally as important to not rapidly overhydrate. Water intoxication or hyponatremia is the result of ingesting excessive amounts of water within a brief period of time. This can cause the sodium levels of blood to become dangerously low. Within only an hour, symptoms will begin to show up. These symptoms include swelling in the brain, seizures, coma, and even death. Athletes are especially susceptible to this, as when they excessively sweat, they lose both water and electrolytes. Although they may drink plenty of water, their intake of electrolytes, especially sodium, may not be sufficient enough. If the intake of electrolytes isn't enough, they could easily experience water intoxication. Sadly, deaths have occurred from this. One tragic death in particular was that of 28-year-old Jennifer Strange, a woman who took part in a water drinking contest that promised a free Nintendo Wii to the winner. Jennifer, a wife and mother of three children, died shortly after the contest. Although she showed signs of experiencing water intoxication, no one took her seriously. Investigators estimated that the woman drank nearly two gallons of water during the contest. 
In conclusion, if you are dehydrated, it's better to drink small amounts of water frequently rather than intaking a large amount all at once. Sometimes some of the most dangerous animals are the ones we least expect. It has been estimated that cows are responsible for 22 deaths per year, and of those 22 deaths, 75% of the time the attacks were deliberate, and a third of the cows had previously exhibited aggressive behavior. This means that cows kill more people than sharks do per year, sharks being responsible for approximately 5 deaths annually. Out of the 21 deaths that occur within a four-state area, bulls were responsible for 10 of the deaths, cows were responsible for 6, and multiple cows were responsible for 5 of the deaths. Group attacks were well coordinated. Studies have shown that when the cows are defensive, they assemble together in a circle. Those who have survived being attacked by cows rarely make it unscathed. Many are left permanently changed. One example was a cyclist and mountaineer who was leading a race through a pasture when out of nowhere a group of cows attacked him. Though he survived the unforeseen attack, he received fractures on his shoulder, spine, and eight of his ribs. Fortunately, being attacked by cows can be avoided by staying out of fields and farm property where cattle are known to roam. But if for some reason you do find yourself in such a dire situation, your chances of survival could be rather slim. People consume an average of 3,950 milligrams of sodium per day. And despite the regional daily differences, which range from 2,000 to 5,500 milligrams, the average is almost double what the World Health Organization recommends. This excessive salt consumption accounts for 2.3 million deaths from strokes, heart attacks, as well as other heart disease-related complications. Although sodium is necessary for the body to function, the salt consumption in the Western world exceeds the maximum recommendations. This unnecessary consumption has resulted in many negative health impacts, including cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and even certain cancers. And although the food industries have acknowledged the dangers of high sodium levels, it will be long before they can reduce the amount of salt they add into processed foods, as it's usually used to enhance flavor and prolong overall shelf life. Individuals with high blood pressure are more susceptible to developing heart disease from excessive intake of sodium. In order to combat this, it has been suggested by medical experts to eat more fruits, vegetables, and beans, which will increase their potassium levels, and this helps lower blood pressure. Unfortunately, deaths from disproportionate salt intake do not appear to be declining. We can only hope that someday people will live healthier lifestyles. There have undoubtedly been numerous occasions where we accidentally cut ourselves on something. Usually these cuts are very minor and we don't even need to bother giving them a second thought. However, it might be more sensible to apply antibiotic ointment because it may just save your life. Sepsis is a life-threatening complication that occurs when the body's response to infection causes damage to its own organs and tissues. Common symptoms include increased heart rate, increased breathing rate, fever, and confusion. Severe sepsis impacts more than a million Americans every year, with 15 to 30 percent of those people dying as a result, with that number continuing to rise. One very fortunate survivor was a man named Chris Aldred. One day he was moving his computer and he cut his finger on an object. Giving it little thought, he put on a band-aid and carried on with his life. However, two weeks later, he began to feel a sharp pain in his back. At first, he assumed he only pulled a muscle, but then over the next few days, the pain grew increasingly worse. By this time, Chris developed a fever. Then one night, when he was about to get up to go to the bathroom, he realized that his legs couldn't move. Immediately, he woke up his wife next to him, crying and asking her to promptly call an ambulance. Five days later, a mass was discovered in his back, which was constricting his nerves and causing paralysis. Initially, Aldred feared that it was cancer, but the doctors eventually determined that the mass was an abscess, the result of bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus entering the body through a wound. 
These bacteria are carried by 40% of people. When they enter the body, usually through a small cut that is not properly treated, the immune system reacts by combating the microorganisms. However, if the immune system is weak, the body can overreact to the infection, producing excessive amounts of pus. The healthy cells will then build a wall to enclose the attacked cells. In Aldred's case, this was how an abscess was formed. For those who are less fortunate, the chemicals that the body releases during sepsis can progress to septic shock, which can rapidly drop blood pressure, thus leading to death. Eventually, Aldred recovered and is now able to walk again, but many others have died from the same condition, entirely unaware of what they had. Perhaps next time you receive a minor cut, it might be wiser to treat it more seriously, instead of shrugging it off as just another cut. Thank you for watching. That's all for this episode. Be sure to press on screen now to watch another video of mine. And of course, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel now because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.